Welcome to the Internet Report, where we uncover what's working and what's breaking on the internet and why. So last week we had a application related outage. So this was Slack that went down on Monday and it was fairly prolonged. So we're going to take a look at what that um, looked like as it unfolded throughout the day. The other outage manifested um, from the standpoint of the user as an application issue. Um, but as we'll kind of cover um, in further detail, this was actually related to a network issue in Microsoft's network. So with that, Let's go ahead and uh, just kind of start, start with the what, what we experienced. Yeah, like this was an interesting way to start a Monday. Right? Yeah, um, I think it started also from a timing perspective. The first occurrence of this outage started around um, 10 a.m. Eastern, so right as the West Coast was getting ready. Yep. Um, things broke and it was kind of interesting for us because uh, we are a heavy uh, Slack user. Um, mm -hmm. Things kind of shut down for us, so we had to get innovative. Yeah, it's, it's funny how reflexive it is to use Slack because even <laughs> as we were uh, experiencing issues and it was really slow, like people were slacking each other about what was happening on Slack. Um, and know, we had and to kind of yeah, that was or funny because, platforms. <laughs> right, unlike previous Slack outages that we've seen where um, the application completely gave up, this one was a little interesting because um, we saw delay in our messages. So we were like frantically typing and like pressing enter and um, it just wouldn't like, you know, be sent through. So it was definite like, you know, sluggishness that we were um, seeing while using the app and it was really varied and and um, some users were seeing that, some just couldn't connect. So it was kind of like a bunch of Sometimes things. Sometimes it seemed like there were, well, there were times when it seemed like it was fine, like yeah. it would go through. So exactly. it was kind of all over the place. Yeah, totally. So from, you know, our, from Thousand Isis perspective, what, when we were alerted to this was around the same time Slack, um, you know. Reported the I, issue, yeah. Right. Or but, in their RCA indicated when it started. Right. Actually, in their RCA, they indicated it started around 6 a.m. Um, Pacific, right? 6 a.m. Pacific is when they started noticing something was um, wrong, which was, um, I believe, an overloaded um, database. They had some memory issues um, that, you know, they reported was actually starting to cause the issue. We noticed it around 7 a.m. here, as we are seeing, and this is across the globe, right? And this, this first outage, the first occurrence of this outage lasted for um, almost two hours, if I'm not wrong here. Yeah, almost for like a couple of hours we were seeing it. We were seeing like the step down in terms of um, availability here and kind of a rolling outage. So sometimes a particular um, vantage point would like not be able to connect to Slack. And in this particular case, we are actually targeting um, api.slack.com. So this is kind of the um, web page that we are targeting um, right here. And I think the interesting thing was actually we're double clicking on this. We started noticing um, a couple of you know error types. One is operation was timing out. So the server was just not capable of responding um, itself. And sometimes we were also seeing um, a 503. 503, yeah. Right. So this was just not available. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, uh, in terms of this, this looked like an application issue. Um, and then just to clarify here, um, the edge locations that were serving, um, you know, Slack, which were hosted in Amazon, Slack's hosted in Amazon, yeah. there was no network connectivity issue in terms of getting to the edge. Um, and very clearly based on, you know, Slack's RCA, this was definitely something in the back end that was impacting the application overall. Um, you know, just looking at their RCA, first off, like kudos to Slack for giving kind of a really in-depth, you know, that, that aspect of transparency, which we have discussed previously on our podcast as well. It's critical and important. So users are aware what's going on. But it turned out to be a pretty nasty day for them because it yeah. was kind of a cascading um, issues that they were dealing with here. Yeah, I mean, the first one seemed to be, as you mentioned, that they had an overloaded database um, memory cache server that they 
um, they detected the issue and then they provisioned a replacement for it. And, and that server that they, re they introduced was actually causing um, an issue as well. And that created further instability. Right. But then they also um, had an issue where it seemed like um, there was a configuration change. Um, uh, this one, that, right? Like well, they, they, also, um, they also had an issue with what they call their internal service discovery system. And that system right. is responsible for routing traffic um, within their infrastructure. Um, and that seemed to, to be having an issue. And that created yet another problem for them. So they had a routing issue and they also had kind of like this database mm -hmm. memory cache server issue. Right, right. And we, the first occurrence like you know we saw that for about two hours 10 minutes and then the second time we saw this come back actually uh, if we go back into uh, the product just a little bit here this was the second time you know we we still felt the effect of um, slack having all of those um, um, root cause issues that they were yeah with. yeah I mean, it just, it just really, it start. it was basically like a full on full day thing. Cause even they even reported that later in the day for some users. And again, like, you know, not across the board, like some of them were even experiencing issues as, as late as like 10 PM yep. that evening. Um, and even if you go earlier in the timeline than that around seven, you see like, there's even a little dip around there. So that's like around six 30. So yeah, exactly. Um, big time. So yeah, I mean, it was basically a, a full-on um, code rest. Yeah, it was a, it was a pretty bad day for Slack. Um, but again, like I said, great great jobs with like yeah. the transparency. Good comms. And just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comms definitely. I mean, a lot of times I think in this this world of the cloud and the internet that we're living in, there's a lot of uncertainty about what's happening, and there's always this question of is it me? Is it somebody else? And uh, where the issue is, so I think they did a really good job in terms of just breaking it down for us. Yeah, I mean, there's the communication that happens during the incident, and then there's like the kind of the follow up to give a rundown on not only what happened, but what steps are going to be taken to prevent this from happening in the future. And the thing about communication during outages, um, I think Slack, um, from what I recall, they were fairly communicative with this one. But mm -hmm. in a lot of instances, the provider is so consumed with trying to figure out what the issue is and fix it that they often forget that there's like a huge number of customers that might be scrambling to figure out what the problem is and determine if, if it's something, you know, with the provider or not. Right. And and that's why it's good to have kind of a a independent view of a service or a network so you're not completely at the mercy of the provider because again they're going to be really tied up at the, yeah. when they're having issues no i think that's a great point that you bring up like you know um because as an enterprise it's relying on a messaging service like this that's very critical once you also recognize that this has nothing to do with your own you know enterprise you know but you can at least think of, okay, how do I make this better for my own users or like my employees, right? So you can devote your time down that path rather than even trying to figure out where the issue is or, you know, um, what what's actually causing this particular outage, for instance. Right, right. All right. So do you want to talk about the second outage, which was yeah. uh, interesting? Office right. Five. So, I mean, there was a fairly... Uh, wide or large scale prolonged outage um, that happened the week before last. And that was related to um, Azure AD. So the an authentication service that is basically the front end um, for services like Office 365 and even Azure Portal and other, other um, even third party applications that are built right. within Azure might use that as their authentication service. So that was the issue the week before with a major outage. But last Monday, which was October 7th. Actually on 7th, which was last Wednesday. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, the Slack outage was on Monday. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, yes. So last Wednesday on the 7th, again, all days are blurring into one another. <laughs> yes, um, same outages. Uh, <laughs> there was yet another issue. And what we were seeing when we had um, were looking at kind of 
the ability to log into the application and the usability of, in this case, Outlook, we, we saw that, that it was very, had a very different root cause because in the case of the first outage, the authentication process was failing. So that mm -hmm. service wasn't available. But in this instance, we actually were seeing that users were able to log in. So Azure AD was available, but once they did, they would hit Office 365 front door and then we would get a 503 service unavailable. Um, now, Microsoft has said that the issue was related to an internal um, uh, uh, update was that was made. Yeah. And this, um, this update uh, appeared to have caused an issue with, with the determination of whether devices should be decommissioned or taken right. offline or not. The 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 update which turns out there was a bug in the code that was updated kind of suppressed an anomaly detection uh, function that identifies health of devices so you know um, and in and although was, what they, yeah although yeah. what they said was that the um the SD WAN um their their you know software defined WAN um, controller should have uh, done some health check of these devices to see if they were actually um, healthy or not. And for and whatever reason, they didn't do that. Yeah, and it involved basically some routes changing. And at the end of the day, like what really impacted this outage was like if the network was congested. Yes, um, right. they, they revoked the route to a bunch of devices that presumably were healthy and mm -hmm. shouldn't have been, um, sh they shouldn't have revoked routes to. And then that effectively made their network smaller. So they constrained their network. So now they had traffic that was going through fewer routes, um, through paths, and that created congestion and then packet loss in their network. And so depending on where um, uh, the, the different backend services were located, they could have been impacted by this, right. this issue. Right. And that's what so we saw. Yeah, and I think um, this this what you're seeing here. It's it's probably a version that you have not seen in the product before. And I think Angelique, that's the point you were making that there was no issue with the authentication. So what we were actually testing and like you know um, monitoring for here is not just availability of an application or you know availability of a particular service, but we were actually digging deeper into the usability of the service. So. Um, the reason we understand and we know that this was not necessarily an um, AD issue, but it was something else because was because of this, where login here seemed to be fine. But when we tried to get into Office 365 to actually compose an email, we were kind of, you know, we're given the wheel of death or in a way, basically the service yeah, yeah. is available here. Yeah. And just to go back in time um, before um, this this outage actually happens, you can see that entire view now where, well, not just as login worked fine, you're able to compose an email. And if you actually look at what the snapshot looks like, so what are you looking at when I'm, you know, in that work stream that has been defined as you're able to see like, you know, your email, your inbox in there, right? So yeah. And that's so important because oftentimes when, when um, you know, kind of from an operation standpoint, they think about like the, okay, network availability or application availability, they're often thinking about it in particular with SaaS apps, like, okay, I knock on the front door and if the application is available, then everything's good. And that the reality is that like, you're just hitting the web front, you're hitting a web server, you're getting the front door. Um, but you don't know if, whether or not the application is actually usable unless you um, go further into the application um, and, you know, using an application is likely going to require some uh, connectivity and availability backend yeah. uh, services um, or parts of the application. And so you won't know if that's actually working unless you do something like a transaction test, which is going to kind of test its that the, the logic and the internal kind of interactions are, are functional. Right, right. Also, the whole aspect of dependencies, I think we've covered that in our previous, um, you know, episodes is, um, first off, like you, your dependencies can have dependencies too. And, you know, they are only going to kind of 
be triggered and you can identify them if you're actually using that SaaS service for what it's meant to, right? Like for instance, if you're in, in Salesforce, if you're actually being able to like look at a particular record and make updates, you know, those could trigger one set of dependencies or creating a new record could trigger a different set of dependencies. Exactly. And, yep. and just being able to um, sequence that and see that workflow um, and is going to give you more kind of, you know, uh, insights into what's going on and where in that, you know, really complex um, chain things are breaking down. And I think totally, yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good added point that you should understand what are the critical paths within the application. So is it, you know, okay, I'm going to execute a search and that's testing to the backend database maybe, or if you're, you know, the example you brought up with Salesforce, maybe if you're doing a quote or mm-hmm. you're executing something else that might call a different backend service. Exactly. So if you want to know if that's available, you need to be testing that particular workflow. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then, you know, also thinking about with some applications like Microsoft where it's, and same thing with like Google where they, many of their applications are highly distributed. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do see things within the application past the front door, it may be possible to uh, connect successfully to the application and, and execute a workflow in another location. Yeah. So okay. something to keep in mind, because you know a lot of times enterprises do have influence over where a, a, an employee or an internal user will egress to the internet. Um, so that, so that's something that they could potentially influence. Right, right. And it's also important to keep in mind that this is not just, you know, kind of an operations, uh, you know, uh, playbook, for instance, to test this, right? You can actually, if you're building your own application, yeah. for instance, then you can extend this all the way into your DevOps, you know, um, and application build out process, because that's where, that's the best place to identify what these dependencies are and if they're failing or not, but yeah. just measuring the end-to-end user transaction interaction with your application uh, becomes critical. So, you know, you're not being reactive and, you know, when something breaks, being alerted to it, but you're catching those dependencies well ahead in your, um, you know, application build out and delivery process as well. So absolutely really understanding how the network also influences that um, and where your users are, are located in relation to where the application is hosted. And, and I think that like from the standpoint of like DevOps or like, um, you know, it's not just, you know, an application that might be customer facing Mm -hmm. um, or even internal facing. It could also be a SaaS app like Salesforce is absolutely an application that you kind of are developing. Salesforce is a platform giving you a blank slate. You are, you have very often your own Salesforce developers, um, your, you know, you're creating this application, you're adding plugins. So you need to know, you know, everything that you're adding there is going to be working for where users are located. So think about SaaS applications. In a lot of cases, they function like a platform as a service. And so you need to, you need to kind of have a DevOps process for them too. Yeah, definitely. That's a great point that you bring up. Um, Definitely. So we're all, I guess a summary is make sure you own the app for not on the app, you know, uh, monitor and and definitely start ahead in the process, right? It's don't wait to get into that operations phase to um, start keeping a tabs on how your services, your providers and um, everybody else is doing. So, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think uh, that concludes our episode today. Um, Hopefully we'll, we'll see what happens this week. Um, So far, so good. Uh, No Monday major issues just yet. Um, uh, So uh, if you check us out, uh, make sure that you subscribe. If you do subscribe, you can email us at uh, internet report at thousand eyes.com and give us your t-shirt size and your address. And we'll send you a, nice, cool working from home t-shirt. So uh, definitely sign up on one of the platforms um, to follow us. Until next time. See you guys next week.